My name is Andrew Collins, and I'm a senior consultant here with IBIS. And today we're going to take a look at SQL Server reporting services and data-driven subscriptions. And what that is, is a um, subscription that's going to produce the SSRS report on demand and send it to a shared file location where it can be accessed by any users or non-GP users who need the information on a weekly or monthly basis. So just a brief introduction to uh, SQL Server reporting services, uh, what they do. Uh, it's a powerful tool uh, to report on information from multiple databases. Uh, in this case, today, the GP database. But if you have a GP database and other ERP systems or systems that lead into your ERP, you can report across all of those databases. Uh, they're also highly customizable. Uh, so you can show exactly what you need to see and exactly what formats. You could use these reports to lead into integrations down the line if you need to. And one of the things I often see is that SSRS is often overlooked and people who have it or clients who have it don't use it as often as they should. So the environment that we are going to be using today, we have SQL Server Reporting Services 2014 installed. Uh, we are reporting on Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015 data. And what we will be doing is generating automatically created reports. Uh, we'll set them up on a monthly basis, summarizing sales territory and salesperson data from within GP. Uh, so just a little background on what has been done prior to where we are. Uh, I've already set up, installed, and configured the SQL Server 2014 reporting services. Uh, you need to make sure that the SQL Server agent is running on whatever service or whatever uh, computer your reporting services are installed on. You need to make sure you have administrator or read and write access to the report server and the file location where you'll be generating these files to. And I've actually gone in and created the SSRS reports and loaded them to the report server. Uh, that's where most of the time is actually going to be spent, is the creating and loading the report the first time. Once the reports are there, generating these data-driven subscriptions is actually fairly quick and simple. So the steps that it takes to create the data-driven subscription is to first create the subscription, and all of this is done on the report server. So you'll see we're going to be interacting with uh, Internet Explorer. But once you've created the subscription, you select and define the data source where you will be getting your data from. Then specify a SQL command or query, in this case, on that data source. Specify the delivery details, so that's where the file will be delivered and what the file will be named. Uh, specify the report parameters, in this case the salesperson ID or sales territory ID, the delivery schedule, which is when it will be delivered, and we're going to verify that the report has in fact been delivered after we complete all of those steps. So now we're going to get started with a demo. Okay, so I have now opened my report server using Internet Explorer. And I'm just take a look at where these reports are. So I know they're in the sales folder. And the two that I'm interested in today are the monthly sales by sales territory and monthly sales by salesperson. So I've already gone in and set up the data-driven subscription on the sales territory. So just take a look at one that's set up first. So we'll do the drop down and we want to go to manage. And once we're managing the report, you want to move to the subscriptions tab. On the subscriptions tab, it will show all of the subscriptions that you have for this report. In this case, we just have the one monthly for sales territories. It's a time subscription, and the last time it ran was this afternoon at 2.40. It just lets us know that four different parameters were processed, and then you see there were no errors. And just so you see the end result of this, this is my shared file location. And we will be generating salespeople, and you'll see in here there are no reports yet. But under sales territories, there is a report already in place, and you see it was generated at 2.40 this afternoon. 
So now let's jump into the monthly sales by salesperson and create a brand new data-driven subscription from scratch. So I'm in the report, go to subscriptions and you see there are none at the moment and we click new data-driven subscription. So this is step one, creating the data-driven subscription. I'm just going to do a similar description here. So it's monthly salespeople. From the dropdown of how the files will be delivered, I'm going to do a Windows file share. So that's going to put them in the shared file location. And I'm going to specify a shared data source. When I click next, it is now letting me specify that shared data source. So within the data sources and select, in this case, it's GP subs. I called it that as just Great Plains subscriptions. I would recommend when you do create a table to hold these subscriptions, do it in a new database uh, that prevents any possible issues when upgrading your GP database. If you're not on GP 2015 and you will be upgrading, it's just a much easier process than trying to include new tables within the GP databases. So I've selected that and now I click next. Now this is where you'll want to pull in the query. This query is going to give you the information that's going to drive the subscription. For the salesperson, it's going to bring in the salesperson ID, so it will generate one report for each salesperson. And then it's also going to define the file name that will be created along with the file path. So this would be a SQL query that I actually already have in place, so I'm just going to copy it in. You can see all it's pulling in is a salesperson, a file name, and a file path. Everything else we're going to be able to default, so those are the only three data-driven options we will need. Once it's there, click validate just to make sure it's going to come in, and it says it was validated successfully. So we can go ahead and click Next. And now you're directing some of those query or some of the uh, query fields into your file location. So the first option here is your file name. And we are going to get it from the database, which is getting it from that query. And in your drop down, we have those three options. And we'll go file name, path the same way for a file path. Uh, the format, so this is how the files will be created. I'm going to just always create an Excel file. Within write mode, you need to specify a static value. And in this case, I'm going to be going to auto increment. So if two files were created with the same name, it would just generate a second file as opposed to overwriting it. Uh, specify a file extension and put true. This will just make sure the correct file extension is at the end of the file name. And now a username and password. So this username and password is going to be a Windows user with access to that shared file location. It would normally be the administrator user on your server or some administrator password. In my case, I'm just going to use my own login. And then specify the password for that user. And we click Next. Now we're specifying the parameters for the report. So we specify where the report's going to go, and now we're going to specify what data is in that report. The first two parameters, in this case, we're just going to accept. Uh, in these reports, they're going to run within the first few days of the following month. So it's going to default to the first day and last day of the previous month. And then salesperson, we just need to enter the salesperson ID. Again, from our query earlier, we'll use salesperson. So we click next, and this is when the data-driven subscription will fire. So the first is when the report data is updated. Uh, that's anytime you update or load a new version of the report onto the server, it would run. Uh, the second option is to create a schedule specifically for this subscription. Or the third, which is grayed out because I do not have any shared schedules, 
you could have one schedule and apply it to multiple data-driven subscriptions. So when I click Next, I'm going to specify this is a monthly report. Uh, we will run it for all of the months, so I'll leave those checked. And I'm going to do it on a calendar day. Uh, I want to show that it's actually going to run today, so I'm going to use today's date, uh, which actually kind of makes sense to run these four or five days after the close of the month, and then what time you want it to run. And again, I want us to see that these are actually being generated, so I'm going to set it for two minutes out and make sure it's set to PM, and then I click Finish. Uh, I would normally recommend the time that these generate be some off hours, especially if you're going to be generating a large number of reports or if the reports have a lot of data in them and it's going to take a while to run. You want to do it in off hours so it's not interfering with work on the server. So when I click finish, it's going to take us back here and you'll see that we have created a new one. Okay, and once the couple minutes have passed, we should be able to refresh this page and see that it has now executed and 15 were processed, 15 total, and there were no errors. So now if we return to our share file location, uh, earlier there were no files in salespeople. And in this case, I'll go to salespeople and then drill, drill down into one of the sales territories. You'll see that there are three files and they were created at 329. And when you open the first file, you'll see that this is just for Jackson Grove and it does in fact only show the sales for his month. So the total sales and the commissions. And then just to see that the second one generated with a different salesperson. You see, now we have Megan Kerman. Again, totals and commissions. One thing to keep in mind when designing the eventual file locations is uh, security that you will use, so security users. In this case, you may have a group for your Florida District 1 sales district. And within that group, you would assign these three users. So you want them to be able to see their sales district. And as salespeople, you know, competitive with each other, you want to see everyone within that district, but they don't want to see the other districts. So the Florida 01 would be available to these three, but maybe your Georgia 01 is to these five and not those other three. So if you have any questions about what you saw in this webinar today, you can email us at marketing at uh, If you're interested in having our assistance with setting up some data-driven subscriptions, we are also more than glad to help. So send your questions and any requests on this way. Thank you.